Hello, hello, this is Kalor132 bringing you guys the next episode in the Road to Fallout 3. In this episode, we will cover Mart's Mutant mod and the compatibility patch between the Mart's Mutant mod and also FWE, and then we will also cover a small side mod called the Directional Pitboy Light. And so let's get started right away with not that. <laughs> right here, here we are. We'll go ahead and do first Mart's Mutant mod as, 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 it, as it is the bigger of the two, well, of the three things that we have to download. So Mart's Mutant mod, what it does is it is a massive updating to mutants, obviously. It adds in a lot of, a few new creatures, uh, menu systems, uh, some goofication and disintegration. <laughs> So pretty interesting there. Uh, some night ghoul changes. It has it basically overhauls a bit of the um, a lot of things actually. Factions, loot, size of the creatures, uh, some diverse creature skins. So it adds several new skins to creatures. Like look at this, Fer feral ghouls. Eighty four different feral ghoul skins. Uh, One hundred and four different models of the super mutant. That's crazy. And the longs with adds some things that I will not, some creatures that I will not be using that just don't fit into the capital wasteland, such as geckos and uh, wanamingos, the floaters. I don't really see them fitting in too well here. So uh, adds in 100 variants to raiders. Just adds in a whole bunch of different skins and also makes them enemy, like the mutants and such, a little bit more. Uh, diverse. So we'll go to this site, which as always, the links will be below in the description, and we'll just go to files. Now the things that we need are, I believe we need the faux mod ready version. Let me look real quick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I need the faux. Yeah, you pretty much want to download this one right here. The Mart's Mutant Mod 1RC61 faux mod ready. So this one is ready to be flat out installed with the manager, so download with the manager right here. And then also the MMM 6.2 update, download with manager as well. So once those are downloaded, and we have them here in our Nexus mod manager, I have them right here. Mart's Mutant mod and the RC 6.2 update. So firstly we'll go to Martigen's Mutant mod, the original one, the 1RC 6.1. And we'll just yeah, activate the selected mod. So this one, I believe, takes a little bit of time. Not nearly as long as NMC's, but it does take a little bit of time because it's got a decent amount of stuff, obviously. So several hundred skins it needs to load up. And variants for our creatures, along with all of its possible settings and everything like that. So that will take us a moment to prepare. So we will come back when it's closer to being... Once it's about done, so we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, here we are. Once it prepares the mod, you will get this right here, this options form. The Martigen's Mutant Mod option form. Configuration method, you want to leave this right here. In-game menu. This is the one that we want. This will add an item in the game that you can configure all of your options, just like Fallout Wanderers Edition's kind of control panel thing. You'll get this in-game as well for, Mart's, for MMM. So just leave this one checked, unless you'd rather do the ESP. This is pretty old version. You basically check... You, you'll have a lot of ESPs if you do this. So go with the in-game menu for simplicity. And then we'll just hit next. Now DLC compatibility, just like always. Uh, you'll need to adjust this as to which DLC you have. Then global options, right here, natural selection, tougher traders, and zones respawn. I don't think we need to install these ourselves, because I'm pretty sure they, these options, I believe, are all in the game from the previous thing. All these should be in the in-game menu, shouldn't have to do any of these. So for now, just leave these blank, and then just hit finish, and then it'll go ahead and install all the meshes, the, the skins, and everything that's part of Martin's Martigen's Mutant mod, and we will get right here our confirm overwrite so it as you see it's 
finds it's finding some creatures that have already been installed by Wanderers Edition, and we want to overwrite that. We want Mart's Mutant mod. It is our monster mod. This is what we, we we're using Fallout Wanderers Edition for more immersiveness. We're using MMM for Mart for uh, mutants and monsters. So yes to all. We want to overwrite anything. We want this to just overwrite any file it needs to to install. So hit yes to all, and then it will continue to install our meshes, our sounds, textures, uh, whatever else needs done, and then it will be completed. And at some point, see, yeah, there it is. The mod was successfully activated. And now we'll just click right here into our 6.2 update, and we'll just hit activate that. And again, this is where NMM is being confused because it recognizes this so it thinks this is an upgrade, which yes it is, but we want to do this, n install this mod normally. Because it, it recognizes the exact same mod, and it's not. This is an update, this is the main thing. This, If we hit yes to this, it'll basically kill our original thing, and we don't want that to happen. So, say no, and yes, we want to overwrite files. Alright, so there we go, we have Mart's Mutant Mod installed, but now we have one thing, there's an issue between Fallout Wanderers Edition and Mart's Mutant Mod. These two plugins, these two mods, do not play well together, normally, they do not play well together. So what we need to do is go to Fallout Interoperability Program, or FOIP for short. Now what this is, this is basically a massive patch collection. This is compatibility patches. So if we go to the files section, okay, here we are. You see there's a bunch of different file uh, compatibility patches. So Eve with Fallout Wanderers Edition, we will be doing this one, but we will do that when we do Eve. Uh, Mars Mutant Mod and Fook 2, we're not using Fook 2. Right here is the one we want right now, is Mars Mutant Mod and FWE. So it says here, compatibility patches for MMM 6.1 plus FWE 6.03, but this works with the 6.2 update as well. So what we want to do is just download that with Manager, and then it'll load into our mod section of our Nexus Mod Manager. So right here is the one we have, Mart's Mutant Mod and FWE from FOIP. And we just want to activate that mod, as always, really quick, really quick to install, successfully activated. Now, if we go to our plugins, you'll see we now have, right down here, Master Release plus the DLCs, Master Release plus Project Beauty, and Master Release. We don't want the Master Release, well, actually, if you have the DLC, this is one of those things that you kind of need, requires... DL, the minimum requirements is the Pit and Broken Steel. You have to have the Pit and Broken Steel to use these together, I believe. So, you'll want to... If you have them, you need that checked. Me, I do have them, so I'm leaving that checked. I don't need this checked now. I do not need the Master Release checked, because I have the Master Release plus the DLCs. And the other option here is the Master Release plus Project Beauty. We do not have Project Beauty installed yet. We will do that. So for now, we need to leave that unchecked. And now, as you see, we've got all of these files. It's all kind of just being jumbled together now at this point. So what we need to do is right here in the FOIP, if you go to the description and scroll down a little bit, we do have right here the recommended load order. So this section contains the load order that FOIP recommends installing your mods. So as it has, it has Fallout 3 ESM and then the original uh, updates for all of, or the original uh, DLC content for Fallout 3, you know, Anchorage, Pit, Steel, all that. And then we have Craft, Caliber, Project Beauty, we don't have that yet. Then ESMs from other mods, then main, then Fallout 3 Wanderers Edition and Mart's Mutant mod, and then ESMs from other mods. So let's go ahead and clear up our ESM. So we have Craft, Caliber, the main file for Wanderers Edition, and I leave the alternate travel right below the main file, the main ESM. We want to leave that there, and then March Mutant Mod, and that's all our ESMs, changes that we need to do. So now ESPs, 
start here. Darnified UI, which we will get to that soon. Project Beauty, we don't have that yet. We'll get to that. ESPs from all other mods except for follower and weather mods. That's obviously not including that's not including the wonder the Fallout Wonders Edition followers enhanced mod. So then it tells us we should have our Fallout 3 Wonders Edition is the next thing we need. So let's make sure we have that in order. And I believe we should okay the main file, then DLC. Keep it steady with the original Anchorage. Uh, let's see, Anchorage, Pit, Steel, Zeta, or not Zeta, uh, Lookout, then Zeta, then the Followers Enhanced, and then, hmm, this got ticked again for some reason. I don't want that one. You stay off. I don't want you. No. Bad. So then all these ESPs are fine. We want those. Should be above Fallout Wanderers Edition. And so then after FWE, we have Weapon Mod Kit we don't have yet, EVE we don't have yet, we will get to those future episodes, I will be installing both of them. Then Mart Mutant Mod, again keeping the DLC in the original order, and then Mart Mutant Mod ESP, Project Beauty ESP from Project Beauty, then the FWE Master Release from FOIP, and that is what we are doing now. So let's see. Mart Mutant Mod right here. This section. We want the Mart Mutant Mod ESP up at the top of that list. Then Anchorage, Pit, uh, Steel, Lookout, and Zeta. Then the Master Menu Module will be here. Followed by these three, which I think we'll be able to get rid of. I'll double check that. Then the Master Release and all DLCs. I shouldn't. I, I'm pretty sure I don't need this because I have this one that has the same requirements. This requires the DLC for that, so we'll just leave that one there. I think that's the only one we need checked. We don't need this checked until we get Project Beauty later, and I'm pretty sure we'll be able to delete these three, but I will check that in-game. And so now we are ready to test this out, but I'm going to go ahead and throw in our other mod, because it's a small mod, really simple to install, and it's really simple to show off, so... We will just install that mod next, and then we'll do the game itself. So the next mod, Directional Pip-Boy Light, is what we are looking for. As it says, it's basically a light that will shine straight in front of you. It's kind of like a flashlight. Because we all know the Pip-Boy Light's default lighting is just a small area of effect. Very small area, too. Not m Maybe a one small room would be fully lit. But we want this directional Directional Light, so it'll shine pretty far out there. And all we want to do is go to our... Files and Directional Pip-Boy Light uh, requires the FOSE, and as it says, this one says for, it's intended for high definition resolutions, while if you have a really low quality computer, you for greater performance you want to download the light version, or you may not want to do this at all if you have a low quality computer. I've already got this one installed, I've downloaded, or well not installed, but downloaded, I'm using the... Uh, one that requires FOSE and is intended for HDR. So in my mod section, I have that, let's see, directional pip boy light. Directional pip light, right there. So all you need to do, as always, activate the selected mod really quick, really quick. Successfully activated. And then it is at the bottom of my plugins list. I'm not going to leave it there. I'm bringing it up here, right below chasm, because this is... Because as FOIP suggests, all of your ESP should be up here and save these for later because we want these to take precedence. This is kind of where load order comes in. And so I'll give you a small overview on load order. Load order, basically, the higher up on the ranking, so if your load order like this one, all these delay, pit, 0B, if something down here were to affect the time when the pit would start, it would have a higher, it would basically take control. What's last on the list will overwrite whatever is on first on the list if it conflicts with anything. So say something with Fall Wonders Edition conflicts with Mart's Mutant Mod. Because Mart's Mutant Mod is lower down, is higher up, way down here at the bottom, it will take precedence and overwrite whatever Fallout Wonders Edition does. Kind of like the skins. Since Fallout Wonders Edition has some things to do with the, mo with the mutants and monsters... But we have this down here below it. 
it will take precedence over Wander's Edition. It'll load this, but then it'll load this, and it'll overwrite it. So, alright, let's go ahead and hop in game, and I'll show you guys what the Mart Mutant Mods menu is, along with also the Pip-Boy Light. So we'll be back in just a minute once we're in game. Alright, here we are. I've just loaded in, and immediately I get this directional light attachment. So your directional light is enabled. Select any of the following options. You can change the color. I will go with, I'll leave it as default of white. Then the beam length, I prefer to have it long, so the basically highest performance. Or, well, not, it's the lowest performance, but it is the longest length. And then also the hotkey by default is L. I'm leaving it as L. So then if we hit done, as you can see, I've got this little light there that is pretty much centered on my crosshair at all times, so you can look around with it. And then if you press if you press L, it'll turn it off. L turns it back on. It doesn't run on any kind of power. You don't need any like extra uh, energy cells or anything like that to run it. So then if we go to tab, now in our apparel, we have this, the MMM control panel. And this has all the controls, so the increased spawn settings, the other spawn settings, such as uh, reduced wasteland, DLC spawns increased, such like things like that. New behemoths, you can get random behemoths, which and gargantuans. I have not seen one of those. That might be terrifying. Probably will be. It'll probably be one of those. Oh, I better get out of here. Moments. Feral ghoul rampage multiplies the normal results. So basically. Feral ghouls can be much more plentiful. Say you set the default increase spawn to at least two times the enemy, so if you normally in-game, if you would have two ghouls in a sewer, there would then be four, but then if you turn Rampage on to two, that would then make it where you have a minimum of eight feral ghouls where two would spawn. So, or wherever one would spawn, you would have four at all times. If, so it basically changes the ratio of one to four having the Rampage on. And then also you can have ghoul rise, where if you don't chop his head off, or a limb, something like that. If you don't chop off, actually I think it has to be their legs, I think you can chop off their arms and they'll still attack you. You have to get rid of either their leg or their head, and then they won't come back. But if you leave them there, you can set it to where they have a chance of rising again in the moment. So if they could die, you could go loot them, then you're coming back through thinking you're all good, and then all of a sudden you're going to get hit in the back by the same pair of ghoul you shot in the chest earlier. We have our miscellaneous options, such as size scaling, which is, uh, size scaling is the, basically monsters have their own, um, section, their own, like, oh, what's it called, their own sizes. They can, you can see younger, like, they, some smaller versions, some larger versions, hunting and looting, which I like this, I leave it on. Uh, corpse flies. The hunting and looting, I believe, allows enemies to basically, if you shoot a raider and that raider had a better gun than the raider that was near him, that raider will run over there, pick up that guy's weapon, and shoot you with that guy's weapon. Corpse flies, I leave on. Skeletal decay, I leave on. And it says right here what's best if Mars Mutant Mod Zone 3 spawn module is loaded. So I think special feature settings are these here, no. I think I'm going to go back and I'm going to actually activate those other three. I'll let you guys know in the next episode about those. And the new monster options, I'm pretty much leaving all of these off on the first options. I will leave them off on option two. I will only turn the stalker creatures off. I will leave young creatures and abominable mutants off. The rest of them, they just don't seem to fit in with the capital wasteland. And the special feature settings uh, has unleveling and whether or not it'll dynamic player scaling, which I'm pretty much not going to use those, so I don't want it to be too hard on me. <laughs> so, alright, I believe that is all, yeah, that, that is all we have to show for this episode, and uh, we will see you all in the next episode. If you have enjoyed this uh, video, please leave a like, make a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and if you already have. Thank you very much for supporting me by watching the video, and we will see you all next time where we will probably cover Darnified UI and go over some user interface mods. And again, maybe another small one depending on how many user interface mods I decide to through the show. So say goodbye to Wadsworth, everybody, and we will see you all. Welcome home, time. sir. Bye bye. Have a great day.